Yeah. We're on Ted Ted Vavamid Bay, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a whole s series of items mm -hmm. that an Avel cannot do, or is chayev or also to do. And then we talked about the comparison to Menuda, the person in Cherem, and the person in, in Saras. And we had the last one that we left for today, which is about a, a, a Avel, whether he can send a Karban to the base of Mikdash. Okay, so the, the, the I'm sorry, the Gemara says Avel ain't a mashalea carbon also. It doesn't depend on which carbon. So it's saying that it, any type of carbon yeah. that uh, maybe I think that you can just decide yourself to send, right. as opposed to if you're Chaya, presumably you'd have to send it. Right. In other not. words, well, um, so um, yeah, it means any carbon. I guess any carbon. So what if it is chatos? Yeah. So chatos would wait till afterwards. Have to wait. Um, okay. Okay. He's not forgiven either. <laughs> hey, <laughs> he's an Avel. He's now we're making it just work. <laughs> not making it any better. Okay. He's not feeling now, good. And he's not feeling good. What, what's going to be unusual about this is we'll just see the next line. You'll see right away it jumps out at you. Mm -hmm. So Avel and Mishalei Kavanos of the Tanya, Rabbi Shimon Omer Shlomim. So it's some, it's some specifically shlomim. Mean, I guess to exclude not just kar, maybe carbon chatos he can send, but shlomim, which is not a carbon chatos. Bizman shu shalim v'lo bizman shu onin. When he is, you send a shlomim when you're complete, <coughs> and not when you're an onin. Now the problem with this line in the Gemara yeah, is onin. Onin yeah, yeah. is only for on, until, until the actual right. funeral itself. Exactly. And um, and the the um, the Rambam. And Rashi and Xavia and other Rishon say that it's really supposed to be Avel. Uh -huh. And the Tosefta had the same title, Bizman Shehu Ba'avelus. Because that's what the question was, right? right. Bizman Correct. There is, there is one opinion in Tulsa Srid that seems to say that it really only refers to being an Oni, but it looks like the predominance of the Rishonim is that we're talking about an Avel, the entire period of Avelus. He cannot send a Karban. Uh, and specifically, it seems to be identifying the shlamim, as Morty pointed out, may not be all the karbonos, may not be karbonos that he is obligated, for, for example, like the carbon Pesach, that he would have to be a part of, uh, but the karbonos that he is bringing that you, such as the shlamim, which you um, uh, you don't have to bring at that point. So, um, so that makes a whole lot of sense, and that's the Gwar's conclusion about an Avel, that he may not send Karbanas to the base Mekdash. The other, the other part that's interesting to this, it doesn't say about, see, seems to say that he can't send a Karban. It doesn't ask about his bringing a Karban, right? He can't send. Mishaleach means he's sending with someone else. Uh -huh. I guess the assumption is that he goes he's home, he's, he's, home, he's novel, yeah, he can't get out. So yeah. if he can't get out, can he at least have someone right. else bring the Karban on his behalf? Yeah. yeah. So the next one is, of course, what about the menuda? Menuda ma'ashish la karbanosa. What about a person who's a nidoi? Can he send a karbanos? And this is going to be another similar machlokas um, between Rav Yosef and Abaye that we've seen in a number of these examples before, last week mm. and the week before. Right. Where Rav Yosef is going to say he can, and Rav is going to say, I'm not quite sure. So Rav Yosef gives the following uh, brisa, and this once again is not exactly equal to the case of a menuda, that we have nidoi. Tashma, kol osan shanim shayisob amidbar, menudim hayu v'shochol komro sehem. That for the 40 years the Jewish people right. were in nidoi. We said, how do we know the people are in nidoi? So they were, Kaddish Baruch Hu doesn't speak to Moshe. Um, they're Hakadosh Baruch Hu's angry with the people. He's, he's forced them to be in the wilderness for 40 years and die there. They're under a ban of death, so to speak. They're, I mean, it's not really, of course, a nidoi because right. nidoi means that you are separated from the rest of the Jewish mm -hmm. people. They are the Jewish people. Right. There's no one else to be separated from. But he says, using that concept that we're in a state of um, words, of yeah. reproof or negativity, none less sham They still sent the kabbalos. Right. Okay, so that's Rav Yosef therefore says, well, you see that you can. And this was the same kind of, mm -hmm. the same kind of thing that Rav Yosef said um, last week, for example, about well, that, that um, a menuda can engage in marital relations. Right. So he says, look, 
The Jewish people were neither for 40 years, yet we know they had children, because they couldn't go to Israel, and their children did. That proves they had children. We know they had children. So, and and Abai, of course, Abai's response is, well, that's not the same kind of need. Maybe a person who's a menudah mm. l'shemayim is different. Um, the kill, kill. Maybe it's lesser. It's not as, se- it's not as severe. It's not as, it's not as harsh as the regular menuda who, who was, who was put in by the, the human court who wants to separate him from the rest of society. Maybe the Almighty separation is a little bit less. Um, and the Gmusan Nagmar is just the final question we had last time, yeah. but Khamer. Yeah. But then you had the same kind of thing when you yeah. tried to differentiate between Menuda and the, in the in, by Hashem to Menuda by a human court, you said maybe it's more Khamer. And the answer is yeah, maybe yes, maybe no. Sluki Mesapkele Umad We have a suffix whether it's more harsh or less harsh and therefore we sure. use it either way to knock off the proof. So at the end of the day we don't know. Abayi says we don't know. Rav Yosef says he does send the carbon. And if you, in, in all these cases where there's a suffix, we're going to follow, we will follow the kula. So it's, this is Hilfsa the Mashiach. We don't have a base of Mikdash today. And, and, but it, it would be applicable when the base of Mikdash is built. By the way, we're going to see when we get to the, the piece of Gemara that follows, talks about based and then calling someone, summoning someone, and then mm-hmm. and they don't come put them in either. Right. We'll see there is something less called Nazifa. Mm-hmm. The zifa is, is not a formal putting a person into a cherem nidoy. The person realizes that he was he 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 misbehaved. He overreacted. He over he, he went past the normal accepted bounds, and he puts himself under some kind of mm-hmm. um, informal um, or, or or maybe or maybe the person puts him under a formal kind of um, um, dissatisfaction. But it's a whole lot less than nidoy. And the zifa may be only like for seven days, maybe it's one day. So, you know, it's possible that when HaKadosh Baruch Hu has displeasure with the Jewish people, maybe that's why you could say it's kill, kill, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, more makeup, because the Almighty is not putting us in yes, cherem, the Almighty is giving us the zifa. He's telling us we did wrong. The Almighty tells us we do wrong all the time, so that maybe that's why you can actually say it. It's not just simply saying yes, maybe less, maybe more, maybe maybe closer to one. A different A lo- much lower classification you, 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 than either. You could say it's higher because they're, they're, they're all going to die in the desert. Yeah. No, no, but he's saying that yes, you, yes, you could. Correct. You could, you, could say, you could say that with the Almighty, when the Almighty puts you into Kherim as well, there's no, there's no way to get out of it. No, but you could argue that this isn't the Kherim, this isn't anything, it's just a straight sentence of death, period. Right. I mean, Correct. that was a right. specific case, and he said, fine. Now, I don't forget, Kaddish Baruch Hu said, you said that your kids are going to die. But it's not that way. <laughs> You're going to die. die in the desert. But I'm saying, the other part I pointed out last week is that there's this whole big gap in the Sefer Torah yes. in Parshish Chukas right. that nothing is recorded. Yeah. The question why is nothing recorded? You could say, well, everything was just as is. Yeah, there was nothing else to add. Nothing else to add. <laughs> now, that sounds like in the end. The, the uh, Chazal say, you no, know, the Almighty simply didn't communicate. That was it. Everything went on autopilot. Whatever they learned, when they learned, and then until you get to the last year, the Shabbat once again communicates with Moshe Rabbeinu, which in, implica, implies there's a certain amount of dissatisfaction that the Shabbat had, not just Moshe, with the Jewish people. Moshe is only as good as the Jews. Okay, the last of the three. Except, this, only, the only thing I'm going to say, I'm trying to remember, in, in Dvorim, there are actually a lot of new, well, let's say, myths, right? Right. And I'm trying to remember whether in every case, it says, by Hashem El Moshe, blah, blah. Or just Moshe just declares these. I don't think every time it says. So. And then you could argue if it doesn't always say Hashem told him then and there. Let's say in Moab that maybe he told him during the 40 years he just didn't bother recording anything. Well, talk about it now. The traditional response would be Moshe, Hashem told Moshe at Har Sinai. And Moshe simply. Right. 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 So even more. Yeah. Right. So then. But be, then the argument would be why would Hashem? What's Hashem got to communicate all together in 40 okay. years? Right. Okay. Right. He told him all that Sinai. He got nothing else to say. Yeah. <laughs> Except the final instructions as far as this, and even that he told them. Maybe. Then, right? Okay, I agree. You know, right. we don't the know. fact that nothing is there is an argument, it's That's an argument from silence. We don't know. Yeah. Okay, so but now to Mitzorah. This is the last of the three, remember, Avel Menu the Mitzorah, mm-hmm. and this is the last of this whole list of items about what mm-hmm. you can or cannot do when you're an Avel or a Menu the Mitzorah. Okay, so Mitzorah Mahu. So, Mars mm-hmm. the question. Mahu Shishlach Kobrnosov, Toshma. The Tanya. We have a brisa here, and the problem with this brisa is, it's um, it's it's not clear what this is taken from. Okay, it's um. Okay, here it is. Uh, I I I told you I made a mistake on that sheet that I gave you a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. This is the this is the correction for the mistake. This is from Yecheskel chapter Memdalad. 
Okay, I put a quote from Yecheska Mamdala that was a mistake. This is the right. This is really the right one. Okay, so Yecheska on the end of the last, about the last ten chapters, Yecheska goes over a lot of what's going to be in the base of Mekdash. He reviews laws. He reviews dimensions. Some of what Yecheska, by the way, writes in those last ten chapters is very difficult because it doesn't jive completely with the Beis Hamikdash that we know about, or the Mishkan that we know about, both in terms of procedures. It's it's wrong, and the long sheet is wrong. This is the right one. It's Perek Mem Dalit Pasuk 26. 25, 26, 27. Right, but yeah. Oh, even 15, 16. Is that what you're saying? What I put there is, what I put for 44 is wrong. It's oh, 24. Yes. Okay, it's an error. What I put for 24 is right. right. When I went to put 44, I we pasted 24 20, again. Right. Okay, whatever it was, was a. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, okay. No problem. We got okay, it. Can get it? Okay, I got okay. it. So, so Yechezkel talks about a lot of procedures in the base of Mekdash, and he writes as follows. And we'll do 25, 26, 27, and we'll see it tomorrow. It, it, yep. it is, is this, but again, isn't Yechezkel the one who has, like, the new base of Mekdash? With all so the answer is, so uh, that's correct. So, <laughs> So in terms of trying to reconcile when there are differences, mm -hmm. we say sometimes Yechesko may be talking about the future base of Mekdash, right. which is why it may not always exactly replicate what yeah. we know. However, there are psukim here that this is the best source we have, uh -huh. and so consequently we, we bring this down. What makes this complicated, you'll see it may be referring to different things that seem to be um, combined together. Okay, so so right, Yecheskel. Let me say, Adam lo yavol letama. About a coin can't come near a dead person to get to, to be defiled. Kim laav, or laaim, or labain, or labas, or laach, or laachot. Asher lo hayta liyish yitama. It can be for now. He doesn't They're include him. They're talking about uh, Kohanim. Kohan, right? Correct. The okay. last ten chapters are at the base of Mikdash right. and the Kohanim. Right. So this Yecheskel says once again, coin can't become tummy except father, mother, mm -hmm. son. Right. Right. Brother, sister, mm -hmm. um, uh, son, nice. yeah. and daughter, and does not list, by the way, um, a wife. Okay? Right, we assume. We assume that. And then, so shivas yomim yom. Then it says, after he is cleaned, mm. um, which ostensibly looks like this is, could be referring to after he becomes Tomei. Right? He can't become Tomei. Except, except for the, the right. close, pe the close people. Right. But if he were to become Tomei with these people, with these people, right, they have to wait a period of time, no, which is going to be Shivas Yomim. No, so it sounds like you go into the mikvah maybe right away. Okay. Right, and then he has to wait seven days. Sounds right. like right. Right. Okay. And Ubiyom Bo Lakol Hakodesh Lachatzer Pnimis Lachreis Yakrim Chatasol Num Hashem Lakim. The day he comes back to the base of Mikdash, mm. or comes to the base of Mikdash to the inner courtyard. He brings a Chatas. Um, now, is that a connection to this Tahara part, or is that something completely different? It sounds okay. like it must be tied in. No? Right, okay. <laughs> so, um, so, here, so, so, here's, so let's go through how the Gemara tries to understand this. Toshma? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Toshma. Well, Rabbi, sorry, does it? But if he comes across a mace, he's walking on the floor. That's a mace mitzvah, then they have to take care of the mace mitzvah, correct. So, so he becomes Tomei, and he's and he has to go through the procedure of becoming Tomei. Same procedure. Yeah. So that once again, that of course is not mentioned here, correct? Right. Nor is mentioned that if he becomes Tomei inadvertently, right? In general, you mean in general. Some other way. Yeah. Right. These are once again, if you look, you you look at those ten, last ten chapters or so, you'll see it's all about procedures in the base of Mikdash. Some of it is about dimensions of the base of Mikdash, mm -hmm. Karbanos, and some of it is about right. the Kohanim. So that's why it's quoted here. So it says the so the Gemara quotes a Bryce of Tashma, the Tanya. After Achare Prishasal Min Hames. Okay. Shivas um uh, it means after he sees he's been been come tame. Right. So now he um is going to wait the period of time. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and then the next part, next part of the Pesach says, says Shivas Yomim, Shivas mm Yomim -hmm. Yisbru Lo. Right. They will count seven days, and here, well, what does the Gemara to say? Elu Yime, um, Elu Yime Sviro. These are the days of his counting. Elu Shivat Yomim. Sh I'm sorry, Elu sh Shivat. My, my what I say? I said, yeah. I said, First it says, Shivat Yamim Yisbulo, and then the Elu Shivas Yamim Sviro. This is what okay. the Gemara is saying. Correct. Right. 
Yeah, so, yeah, so the book says Yisparu lo. Correct. And here the Gemara is telling us it's whatever. So the way, the way Rashi understands this part of the Brisa is this, this second part of the Pasuk, <coughs> counting seven days, is referring to becoming a Metzora, then he has to count seven days. Shivas Yomim Yisparu lo. It's not about becoming a Tome and becoming Tahar. Right. It's about counting seven clean days after becoming after Tzaras. Oh and so Rashi God. feels, okay, so now there's the second piece of this Pasuk, the first part of Acharei Taraso mm -hmm. is referring to Mace. Shivas Yomim Yisbur Yisbulom is talking about uh, referring to Tzaras. And then the next Pasuk, says the, says the Brisa, is talking about something else completely. V'yom ba'o l'kodesh al'chatzeh p'nimis, yakrim chataso. V'yom ba'o l'kodesh al'chatzeh p'nimis, l'shmes v'kodesh, yakrim chataso. So what does that mean? Zu asire t'hoifo shalo. When a Kohen first works for the first time in the Beis HaMikdash, the first day he is inaugurated, the first day he does Yavoda, he brings a meal offering, asire t'hoifo, Right. That is what is found in Vayikra Zayin, mm -hmm. and when it says here he's bringing chatato, right. it's not really a carbon chatas. It is dovetailing with this carbon that a kohen brings. Um, uh, minchas, because it's called minchas chinuch. You heard the term minchas chinuch, right. minchas chinuch yeah. here. Yeah, right. So the term comes from the minchas chinuch. That's a mincha, which is a meal offering, when he was chanukah, like chanukah dedication, when he was inaugurated as a kohen. So this last part, this last pasuk refers to something completely different. So this, 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 this pasuk is interpreted by this brisa in three different pieces. And what's the important part for us is that the second piece, a shivas yomim yispru lo, is saying that when the mitzora, when the mitzora becomes healed, and he counts the seven days, and then he's going to come back to the base of mikdash. So let's let's just go. Which let's means, which means, let me just yeah. give you the what it means, and we'll go over it again slowly. Which yeah. means that a mitzora, while he's still a mitzora, can't cannot bring a carbon. Right. right. Okay. So what they're saying in this pasuk is the first part, right? Right. Achare tahara. So we're talking still about the kohen. About me, they're all about kohen, right? Well, let's know. The second one is a mitzora. Correct. The he's first one is kohen. So correct. The kohen, and what we're saying is the kohen. Obviously, he came to me, he has to come to her. Correct. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. The second thing is a completely separate thing. Correct. We're talking about a Mitzorah, has to count seven days after he becomes clean. Correct. Sort of, he's not a Mitzorah anymore, he has to wait seven days. Right. And finally, the last part... Is about a Kohen who goes yakrif, the first time. Yakriv Khatato. Is about a Kohen... to do with... Anything. Not anything to do with above. somebody dying, not to do with Tuma, not to do with anything. This is, correct, this is the first opinion of the Brisa, Div Rabbi Yehuda. The reason, by the way, that Rabbi Yehuda feels that this middle part is about Mitzorah, not about a Kohen, is because it says Yisbru Yom, Yisbru Lo. Yisbru Lo, right. right. You have to spirit the account. Mitzorah, mitzorah has yeah. to count seven days. Or somebody's going to count it for him, even. Correct. They're going to watch it, That's fine. make sure they count the seven correct. days. So that's Divrei Rabbi Yehuda. So according to Rabbi Yehuda, from the middle line of this, the middle piece of this, you see the Mitzorah cannot bring a carbon. Absolutely. Okay. Then Rabbi Shimon says, in arguing on the drash with Rabbi Yehuda, so we're on the top of the next page, Tet Sayin of Aleph, Rabbi Shimon Omer, Bevo'o, it says, Uviyom Ba'o La Kodesh. Right. Yakriv Chatato. So Rabbi Shimon says, this last piece, really is the key to everything. It's not about the Kohen coming the first day. The drash is as well. It's a completely different drash. But v'ol yakriv, bizman shara'oi l'bi'ah, bi'ah means coming into the base of Mikdash. When the Kohen can come into the base of Mikdash, v'ol yakrova. He can bring his chatos. He can bring his karban. When bizman shara'oi l'bi'ah, v'ol yakrova. When he can't come into the base of Mikdash, he can't be makriv. So Rabbi Shimon says, Forget these first two psukim. Forget trying to, to, to pull us apart and say this is about Mitzorah. The last line makes a general rule. It's not about the new Kohen. Pshat in the last line means if a Kohen can come into the base of Mikdash, right. he brings his carbon. Which means if he can come in, he can bring the carbon. If he can't come in, can't bring the carbon. Ergo, right. a Mitzorah cannot come into the base of Mikdash for our purposes here. But sorry, can't come into the base to make dosh. That we all agree upon. Not from here, but we know in general. Right, yeah. in general. So if that's the case, he can't bring a carbon. The fact that he, ah, whether he brings like it, in other words, 
No, whatever it says here, the coin, like whatever, what when, you, when you can come in the base and make this, you bring a carbon. So we, we think it's talking about a coin. Rabbi Shima says it applies to anyone. Anybody. If you want to bring into, if you want to bring a carbon, you have to be eligible to come into the base and make this. Right. We were arguing maybe he's going to send the Michelle there, come and also send it with someone else. No, the rule is you have to have the potential so to be, a to be able to, right. Yeah. If you don't have, if you don't want to want to send it with someone else, because you don't hate. But you have to be able to walk into the base of Mikdash. So yeah. from Rabbi Shimon as well, Beautiful. whichever, whether you take the first opinion of Rabbi Yehuda and you pull apart the Pasuk and say the second half of the Pasuk, or, or Rabbi Shimon's approach, either one or both of them seem to indicate that a Mitzorah cannot bring a carbon, can't, can't bring, be in the base of Mikdash and can't send the carbon into the base of Mikdash. And that's, that's the proof. And that is the conclusion that that a Mitzorah may not send the carbon mm -hmm. into the base to make this. Surely he can't come in himself, Obviously. right? But he can't send the carbon into the base to make this with someone else. Yeah. Well, Rabbi, it's a good thing we have you. Yeah, well, it's a good thing I we read have. it like that. I never would have. Asked Correct. So the answer is that's what's the problem with Yecheskel. Yecheskel is, is very different, and you, and and the interpretation of the psukim here, yeah. of Ooh. course, are very strange. Okay, Adkan. This is the first part. This is the whole thing we had about all the laws of. Of Avel, what he has to do, what he can't do, what he must do, and so forth. Now, because we mentioned here about Menuda, mm -hmm. so we have this whole piece here about uh, putting people, Somebody calling just people. Walked, we're not too loud, are we? Just, just double check. Okay? No. Somebody just walked out, no, right? I just walked okay. out. Okay. Okay. So, uh, there's nobody here. There's nobody here. Nobody, nobody here. here. So the bottom line is, because we talked about Punido and so forth, we're going to go through the process of how you uh, summon someone to a basin, right? Two ways a person can be put in the cheirum, or a nido, let's say. One is, um, he's recalcitrant to a basin's psak, right? Second of all, which could be something as simple, whether he owes a hundred bucks or doesn't own a hundred bucks. The ultimate way of enforcement was, if you didn't follow the basin's decision, and you didn't and you didn't follow through. They didn't send the sheriff to collect. They didn't send you over to a collection yeah, agency. They, they put you. They could have, but they put you in the cheirum. But they, or the eventually, inevitably, yeah. that was the ultimate the ultimate fallback. Did they put your name on the show on the board or something? Like that? <laughs> right. Isn't that part of it? Be on the board of directors. Or be on the board. Them, they tack a board outside yeah. saying mm -hmm. so and so didn't pay. So this so the answer is we. The only time they really do that today is for people who don't give a get. I mean those. Days. Yeah, but he's saying in those days maybe they would an easy thing. They would have just put a little sign. Sometimes you know, Mr. So and So hasn't paid the hundred bucks he owes. The so the answer is um, the answer is if it's a private, if it's a private kind of thing, it, it's by putting a person into cheirum, you it affects his relationship with the community. Is that private? Is that private? Uh, putting the cheirum is public. You're right. Correct. If you if you don't comply. That's what he's saying. If they didn't comply, it would the court case. The court well, case. some of the court decisions are a matter of public record. Absolutely. You you can find out. You can find out any court decision. Mm -hmm. Jewish courts too. Jewish uh, courts, maybe even. No, because well, today sure. Jewish today's Jewish courts work with an arbitration. Right. Okay, okay. it's a, it's a binding arbitration panel. Okay, so, fair enough. Okay. Yeah. So it's an arbitration panel. They don't have to reveal the set the findings. Sure. No, but if you yeah. come into the shul, it's, it's you don't listen to the arbitration. You, you, you don't, don't, don't have to go, go to the court. court. It's right there. Happening for okay. it's, it's That's important. why. They okay. Do. So obviously, so though they were they announced when a person was put in chair, they announced it in shul as well. They didn't wow. have to write it down. Those days, there weren't so many postings. It wasn't like people could read. It wasn't no, like bulletin boards. Most people Both couldn't could write. Could read. Even people that could read couldn't write. Writing was a special. No, I'm saying the base he could have written he means, but you know. Right. Uh, so I'm saying so they these things were clearly announced. Yes, they were announced and they were advised to people and 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 so. But I'm saying this one way in which a person could be put in cheirum was he was recalcitrant to the basin summons, right. the basin's decision, decision, or in a more simplistic way he was recalcitrant didn't even come. Oh, the basin calls him he doesn't show up. So mm. with, with just go back to uh, Moshe with, uh, with, what's his name, Dustin Aviru. It's going to come up right in a moment, yeah. Ah. So what, what was that? Is that uh, he, didn't, he didn't put him in the hair. So no, the Almighty does. Kill, the Almighty puts him in the <laughs> correct. <laughs> but actually, the, so that, but, but, but the, the other way, the other, the other situation that a person is put in the is if he rejects the authority of the based in in making policy statements. It's a little different. Once, once again, the issue is um, they're calling me because Ru I'm Reuben. Reuben and Shimon have an argument. So well, Shimon calls me to a base, and I don't want to go to Din Torah, or I don't want to listen to what, the, what they told me. I have to pay them $100. That's one kind of thing. The other kind of thing is the basin says, you know what, um, we're doing. This is how we're going to do things in Shul. 
and this is how we're going to make decisions about this um, uh, this policy statement in halacha. And you decide you don't want to do that. And there are some very significant cases in through the Gemara where people felt that they 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 did not they rejected the authority, uh, and and they were you know kind of put through the ringer because of that because the basin has to have an authority. Um, today we we've lost that power in religion because we live in an open society. So put a person at the cheyrim has has very little worth. What does it mean? Who knows about it? First, who knows about it? Second of all, we're so decentralized. Yeah, the person can move to Florida. Right. Now, where it is, folks, where it is put in place, sometimes there are some, some cases where husbands, uh, or by the way, it can be wives as well, do not sure. want to give a get or do not want to receive a get. Mm-hmm. And those um, can become very difficult cases, and, and there are cases where those people's names are publicized. I don't know, if you look at, for example, the Jewish press, so I don't like that's a quote that is a paper of, of okay. significance, okay. but but they, put, they, put but they do put in, they do put those well, things you in. Yes, would. Okay. I mean, it, you, you, you don't see the CGN. I don't think. No, no, but I'm saying you could. You right. should. Sure. Anyway, again, let's talk about it again. So, <laughs> we get is a serious problem. We get is a serious yeah. problem. The person, yeah. the, the marriage has come apart. Whatever it is, okay. okay. So it should not. You should not make women who are keep a woman who is not make her so in a good and a Okay. All right. Here. Anyways, so as a result, we're going to go through the process. About, yeah. Correct. So Amar Rava. So this is the, the fourth line. Amar Rava. Minalan the Meshadrin Shlicha de Beidina Umizam Leiladina. How do you know that I send a court messenger to bring someone to court when I have when there's when we think the person is in this case recalcitrant or standing up against. No, but so, I, so we're not talking I have to here about an ordinary case that didn't even start yet. Well, because that would be very different. Nobody's recalcitrant. You say, like you said before, Shimon and, and you stand the court says, okay, the plaintiff is well, coming. And, and, and then Torah, they come on their own. And, well, and one might come just no. I mean, we assume, we're assuming everybody was a deep Torah. No, correct. You didn't go to Roman courts, right? Right. So if somebody owed me money, I thought I would go to a Jewish court. So the answer is it applies to both. Right. It applies to both the case of of, of Korach and Dosan Aviram. It's obviously more of a theological discussion. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. But here, here was the initial request. That's Correct. What I'm saying. Just words, so, summon. How do I know? How do I know that I have to summon? There's a formal process to right. summon a person to din, and the way that we have it is a showdown between Moshe and Korach. And the reason the Gemara uses this as an example is because in all the other situations, these were not complaints against Moshe. <coughs> Moshe is, is viewed as the melech, as the uh, based in the religious leader, the head of the court, the final decider, the final arbiter of Jewish law. They, Mo- they, they wanted to kill him, uh, was it after this one maybe? Was, they, 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 they were, they but they never him. argued with him. They no, weren't they, happy with they, they were they were complaining. They didn't want to go into Eretz Yisrael. They thought they were going to die in the Midbar. But there never was a theological complaint. The complaint of Korach basically is, who are you? Complaint. Who are you to be the leader? Exactly. We refuse to accept your rule. We're Levim just as much as you. We're Levim. We're Bechorim. Right. So no, Bechorim. we are rejecting so the power of your basin to make a decision. They accept them in Egypt. I'm sorry. In Egypt, when they, when, when he, he, but in he Egypt, there was no basin. Here he is. He, no, he said to God that they're not going to believe me, and then right. they came and they did believe me. Huh? Eventually, only after I think later, yeah. after a few also, more. Also, yeah. but, but Moshe is not established. Now you have a people, and Moshe is the lawgiver. Moshe is the law. If you had a question to ask about what does this law mean, who would you go to in the midbar? You would go to either the people Moshe appointed, and they would go to Moshe. You'd go to Moshe directly. What is the law here? Moshe would say, "This is the law." And if Moshe says, "This is the law," and you say, "Well, it's not the law," okay, <laughs> we have a problem. The law like this is coming, but that doesn't happen. Yeah. Okay. So, um, right, it does say. Yeah. Correct. So what does that mean? They believe them, but Korach, Korach didn't have a power then. Okay. Where does where does the story of Korach Why appear? What, what, what so the Kor- the story of Korach appears right after after the message after the spies come back and they're not going to Egypt to Israel anymore. It's exactly the point. As long as Moshe said we're going to Israel, mm-hmm. he had credibility with everyone and no one wanted to rock the boat. Okay. The moment that that hope to die, so to speak, so Korach has an in. Korach says the people no longer have confidence in you. It's clear, we, have no, right? we have no confidence in you. You're you're a fraud. You're a phony. Your interpretation of law is no better than our interpretation of law. 
You can see in the eyes of Chazal, in the eyes of Chazal, Korah comes to challenge Moshe about the tchelas, about the tzitzis, uh, right? About the mezuzah. What if you have a house that's full of sifrei Torah? Do I need a mezuzah on the door? If I have a, if I have a, a, a garment that's completely blue, do I need the blue, blue tchelas tzitzis? These are arguments about fundamentally how to interpret Torah. Mm -hmm. So, so Chazal understand the rejection of, and and in fact that Moshe really gives up and doesn't know what to do. Moshe says to God, "You got to do something. If these people die like everybody else, mm -hmm. then nothing's happened. You, you, something drastic has to occur. And what happens? The earth yeah. opens up and swallows them up. There's never something like that that happens internally. There are plagues, there's fires, there's destruction. But something like this stands up because Mo, it's a showdown for the leadership of Moshe. So this, so if you wanted to find a paradigm." In the Torah, where you have a summoning to a showdown, to a to a a based in, a based so, in so to speak, this is the case. Um, so, so how do you know? You first you send a send a, a, a shleach. You guys send a shleach to some of the person. So Moshe sends to call Das You see, Moshe doesn't go himself. Who's Bnei Eliyahu? Uh, Dustin and Aviram, the sons right, of Eliab, the son father of, of Dustin and Aviram. Mean, these were brothers? Yes, Dustin yeah. and Aviram were two brothers. <coughs> Can you imagine, with Nachas to have ch children like this. Yeah, it, never, it never tells you that the Aviram of Tilusma. Oh, no, no, yeah, wait a minute. minute. So the answer is it doesn't really have them and, and identify until this case. Right. All, the other, all the other cases where you think about Dustin and Aviram are cases, in hindsight, the Chazal, the Chazal say they were in the Mitzrayim and they were here, the Yamsuf, but nowhere else are they identified except in this case. Yes. I'm just looking at the wording here. The first one says Shlicha de Beidin. The second one says Ladina. So are we saying what where is where am I looking? you? I'm reading the line. Some the line. Line. Right after B'nai Ali, the next yeah. three words. The Dina. No. I'm so wondering whether there's a difference between summoning you to the base Dean and summoning you to a Dean Torah, so to speak. So it's it's taking it piece by piece. The first thing is how do yeah. you know you send a messenger? Okay. So yeah, the how, messenger. Do, how do I know that there's a formal there's a, before I tell before that I tell him what, what I'm sending him mm -hmm. for, then I got a formal messenger who delivers a message. So that's the essence right. of the message. Not that I simply post it on the shul wall, not that I put a, a, a posting in the paper. I've got to send someone to call them directly to deliver the message to them. I need to send them a registered so the letter. Has the key to that first sentence. Right. right. So I send the shlicha. So we, and the shlicha has to come to them. Right. So sending a registered letter would be that equivalent, okay. which is one to, which is what is done today. As modern, so you do not have to sh send the guy across the country. You send it registered, and when you sign, you've accepted that. Um, so the one is about the shleach. It says So, so it's a, the pasuk itself is clear. Moshe sends to call to Das right. Moshe sends doesn't someone. go. He sends somebody else. He sends someone else. Uminalan the mazam the mazminin ladina. How do I know? That I uh, that I call them to a judgment. I'm telling them what they're coming for. Right. Not that I say, okay, we're Just upset so with you. <laughs> uh, you are coming to a din Torah. You're coming to a base. Din dechsev ayomer Moshe al Korach atov ve'achal adascha heyu lefnei Hashem lefnei lefnei Hashem achar. So Moshe says to Korach, you and your buddy and your, your whole multitude are going to come tomorrow. Moshe tells them exactly when the showdown is. In other words, before, be, one, one Pesach talks about sending to Dasan and Aviram. The other one is Moshe speaks directly to Korach and says to Korach, tomorrow you're going to be here with all your people. So the two things come out. One is, one is Mo Moshe sends a messenger to Dasan and Aviram. It's not clear, is he then now speaking to Korach or the messenger tells Korach and Korach comes to Moshe and Moshe says to Korach, tomorrow we're going to have a Din Torah. But what's clear is there are two things here. One is you got to send a messenger. Two, the messenger's got to say what it's all about. And in the message, or in the, um, um, yeah. what do we call it? Hasmana. Hasmana, right? Hasmana, right? Yeah. The summons. Right. It has to say the following. It says, Lakame Gavarabba. It has to say that you're being summoned by a great one, by a, gr a rabbi, but in this case a basin. You have to identify the person who is summoning them and 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 the and the fact that they're a person of stature. Dirsev, it says Lefne Hashem. The Pasik Vayoma Mushal Koach Atovia Daskha Hayu Lefne Hashem Mahar. And it says and 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 you gonna you're gonna come as well. Not just you're going to come, but you and the Baldin. Ata Uplanya, you and Plony. So this is gonna be in the case here of Korach. The rejection is um his Baldin is really Aaron. Because Korach Part of the rejection is whether Aaron should, with the Kohanim, should be the leaders, or whether Aaron should even be the Kohen. 
So it's not just Moshe. Moshe is functioning as the super judge here. But the, he says, you and Aaron are going to come. And in fact, it's Aaron. It's, um, there's a, there, the, the machta, the, yeah. the, 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 the sensor, the spoon, is the one who stops the plague in the very end. So Aaron is the antagonist to you. So the the summons has to say you're going to come to what to a base din to a din Torah. The din Torah is being adjudicated by the judge so and so, and the bali din are you are against your the other person. The plaintiff and the defendant have to both be listed there. The judge in this case Hashem, right? In this case, the judge is Hashem, right? And the plaintiff or the defendant is Aaron. And his problem wasn't his problem was with Moshe, not with Aaron. Well, so depending, you know, there's a whole motley crew here who have different problems with different people. Right. Right. Um, B'nai, um, Dustin Avira and B'nai Eliyav are from the tribe of Reuven. Right. They probably feel the Levim have no right being anything and they should have gone to the, the Reuven first, who was the firstborn. Yeah. Right. No, but then you have the, then you have the, mm-hmm. ma, ma, then you have, and the, you have the Masai, Chamishim Masai Mish who are B'chorim. Right. They feel that Ruvain has no claim, but it should be the firstborn should have been this yeah, because they flip with Levim, so Levim should be out altogether. Exactly. Then you got Korah, who is a Levi himself. Right. His claim is it shouldn't have been Moshe and Aaron. It should have been his his, his side of the family. Yeah, but, but it all, it's all read against Moshe. Moshe is, is given these rules. So Correct. See, so right? It's, it's not Aaron exact. It's not. Uh, it's Moshe and Aaron together. No, but Aaron is just yeah. going by what Moshe is saying. Yeah, Correct. Yeah, but he's saying, but he's saying Aaron's wrong. He's, he's saying he shouldn't listen. He's favored, yes. Quick. The, the other question is, the other question is Moshe calling Dustin Avira, or is Hashem telling Moshe to call Dustin Avira? Yeah. Who's really, who is the judge here, and who is, is it Moshe or is it Moshe slash Hashem or is it Hashem? It's not an exact, it's not an exact Moshe comparison, but it's using a paradigm. Okay. So, and you all, in the, in the summons you also have to have the 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 on Zimna. You have to define the time when the court is going to meet. So the summons says, you, so-and-so, have to come tomorrow at this court, who is adjudicated being by Judge so-and-so, and you and the following defendant are going to be there together. Dechsev Machar, it says Machar. And then, um, the Gemara says something else. That before you can begin to put a needle in place, you have to call him twice. Or you have to make sure he has to, he has to, he has to deny coming two times. Mm. Okay, so that's be two times if he if he's re, if he's recalcitrant, you gotta try to bring him back. Two, two days or, or two, two or twice the same day. Uh, it's not clear. Okay. It says twice. 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 Two times. Two times. <laughs> um, Dixiv says, and this is a as a pasuk completely from mm-hmm. left field. This is from right. Yahu. It's about it's about the kings who are who are taking shots at, at Paro, um, not, not real shots, they're taking, making fun of Paro. Kiru shem Paro melech mitzvayim, sha'on hev yamo'ed. Call Paro the king mitzvayim, sha'on is like he's blustery, he's angry. Hev yamo'ed, the time has passed. So the Gemara feels it means that there was a time where Paro um, had, had com- said he was going to do something, he didn't do it, so the time came and, they, then they, and it happened again. You missed it once, you missed it a second time. So the bottom line is, before you can put a thrown person to Cherem, there has to be two separate Hasmanos. Gotcha. Before you can consider this guy to be recalcitrant. Okay, it makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, people don't pay their Fire. statements on time. So, so that you get a warning from the bank, you get a second warning yeah. from the bank, then they start clamping this in. This is so similar in a way, and you wonder why they didn't do it. I mean, in so many ways, it's like our own law. But, so, the court issues a paper today, right? Paper has to have all these details. Who's suing you? What they're suing you about? What it's about? Court? Yeah, when you have to come, etc. But most of our courts say you have X amount of time to come and say if you don't agree with what the claimant or the plaintiff is saying. If you don't come in that time or file a paper, or whatever, we're going to hear the case without you. Yeah, because people procrastinate and don't no, 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 say. But the implication here is they didn't have they that. Did, they didn't. In other words, instead of saying. You know what? You have nothing to say. We'll listen to the guy who does have something to say. And if it sounds reasonable, we're going to rule against you. You had a chance to come. You didn't come. Right? Yeah, they, yeah, they put you Instead in of that, they put you in Cherem. Which was which a, a suspension of the court. But that's interesting because we'll find out later in a theory, after they put you in Cherem, normally, let's say here you're in contempt yeah, of court. Yeah. You don't listen to the court. Yeah, yeah. We also have things. You don't listen to the court. Not that you didn't pay the money, but the court says whatever. They put you in jail for a few days, right? 
But if you then say, okay, okay, you know what, the court ordered me to do X, I'll do it. Obviously, they let you out of jail. So the question is, a guy who's in Cheyram here, let's say he didn't Correct. listen twice, can he then come and say, okay, you know yes, what, so I am going to plead my case, and he might even win for that matter. I could presumably, right. you might win. <laughs> so, correct. And Very once again, this gets back to two types of cherem, the, the monetary yeah, yeah. arguments or the right. theological Yeah, arguments. yeah, right. Exactly. Okay. And you know, the Gemara actually will make a difference in whether you can reach out, how quickly you can retract the cherem. Well, like, and like you say, monetary is one thing, and a, yeah. a fundamental okay. ikar or something is a whole correct. other story, right? Okay. Now, um, then, then we go back to Korach here. Um, Uminalan di imis pakir b'shlicha de beidina. Uh, if he is disparaging, he's um, he's uh, mocks them, right? mocks them to the of the based in the uh, the Omar, and then the shleich of the based in comes and tells over what he said. Mm -hmm. In other words, the shleich based in is not just mocking the shleich; he's mocks the whole based in. Yeah, yeah. Takes him takes shots at uh, the whole system says, and, and, and the Torah and, and everything. So so how do you know if the shleich comes to say this? Loman chaze klishna bishna. It's not lashon har for shleich to say it over. Because ah. the only one who heard it was the shleich. Of course. Now he said, "What's the big deal?" He said he didn't say it. It's not gonna make a big deal. Either he comes, he doesn't come. But how do you know if the shleich says this over that this is not considered yeah. lashon har? We have a rule: the lashon har is not lashon har, but it serves a purpose. Right. Right. In other words, sometimes lashon har can be helpful, can have positive things. Very difficult when. Well, he's but, been a shaliach of the court anyway. Correct. But I'm yeah, saying. Reporting back. Correct. So at any rate, it, 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 one guy's believes. Like he's, he's, a he's, a guy. he's one guy. One one aid one aid is believed for Isun Heta. One aid is believed for a lot of things. Mr. The Hedda. best the best proof yeah. is you have one aid who's a mashkia. Yeah. yeah. How do you know the food is kosher? Say, oh see a war. Not see it's the guy who was there. The answer is one aid. You go you know, you go into someone's kitchen, how do you know it's kosher? One aid. They, they one aid. Mashkicha. A mashki mashkicha, right? <laughs> this is, this is a, this is a mashkicha. Yeah, yes it is. You choose, choose wisely. You can't so if you can't believe a court official you got a real thought. Well they have to cho choose someone who is above reproof. That's correct. All right. Um so then we have how do you know this Dhsiv Haine Honashimahim Tanakir this is when they come to Dustin and Aviron. Right. So Moshe sends to them. We already we saw that Moshe saying to Dustin and Aviron, uh, he sends with a shaliach. And what does what do Dustin and Aviron respond? That's what they say. That, they that say, is their response. They say, "Hainei to Nakel. Are you going to like? Are we blind?" That you're going to follow you and listen to you? What, you think we're stupid? You, you're taking us down the hole and you want us to be able to listen to you? So, um, right? That's what they said. Um, now. Exactly what they said. Uh, Ted, Ted Zion right. looks like you're Dalit. If I can read my... Ted Zion looks like you're Right. right. So Vaishlak Moshe Lakro Dasan Valavir Bene Avalavir Vaishlak Moshe Lakro Dasan Valavir Bene Alia Vayimulon Allah. So Moshe said, this is supposed to be so before, and they say we're not going to go up. Hamad Kelisanu, is it a small thing that you brought us up out of the land of Merit Savat Chalav Advash to bring us out of land of milk and honey, which is Egypt, to kill us, Lamitena Bamidbar? Kitisnarero, Leno Gamtisnarero, now you're going to make yourself a prince over us, and you didn't bring us to Eretz Yisrael, you didn't bring us to Eretz Savat Chalav Advash, you didn't give us Nachlas of Never Kem. Nashim aims not care. Are we blind? And we're not going to come up. Now, how do you know they said this? Well, how do we know anything in the Torah? <laughs> so, yeah, well, the Almighty, the, the, the Almighty is the ultimate editor. Exactly. But the, if you accept the fact that Moshe sends to Dustin and Aviram to call to tell them to come, and we have, and you have the response, which is very, very graphic. Right. So the assumption is whoever was sent is the one who told Moshe about this. So you see, and that's a pretty bad thing to say. Uh, These are not just bad people. They said they said very, very bad things. So therefore, if you if that is the case, it must be that it is not lush and hard for them to be able to say this kind of statement. And therefore, it's permissible for the shaliach to then repeat it over to um, to to the to the court. Okay. Now um, now we have we go on. Um, how do you know that if this happens, that you put the person into 
uh, that it basically can put the person into a chem. These are the terms shamto, which means here the uh, the same thing as nidoy. Yeah. So how do you how do you know? Rav Rav Steins also has menadi. Menadi, correct. So sh- sometimes you you find word shamto used as well. Um, so how do you know? Th- that's what that word means in this case. Let's say right rather than a chem, it's like you said before, it's a nidoy, right? Right. So how do you know this? So it brings a very funny kind of proof um, from the Shiras Dvora, where it says, "Yeah, where it says, this is in the song the Dvora sings after she has destroyed um, what's his name? Uh, not Yavin. Yeah, no, Yael for the oh, is that the one? Yavin is the king. No, um, no, not Yavin. Sisra. 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 Sisra, right, and the leadership of the king of, of, of Yavin, king of Canaan. Right. So, the Pasuk reads as follows. Um, Curse, Oru may rose, Omar Malach Hashem. Oru, Oru Yoshveh, curse the Yuma rose, says the angel of God. Curse you bitterly, the inhabitants of love. Why? Because, Ki lo ba lezrat Hashem, lezrat Hashem ba giborim. Because they did not come to help, um, Hashem to help the Lord against the many. They didn't come to help the Jewish people. So in other words, these were cities that were nearby and they didn't give any assistance to the Jewish people who were fighting against Sisera. Well, why, why, why should they? Why, why would they want to interfere? They're, 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 supposed to, they're, they're supposed to help Jewish people. Is that... Is that uh that's, that's, so, what we, that's what we want, but is that, like, is that uh, one of the well, laws? Well, so <laughs> if we won, then we can curse them. Okay? That's it. The, the question is, the, the, the more complicated part about this puzzle is, not that they, who, the, who are they, and where, not whether they should or they should have Who is Mayrose? Uh, Mayrose, I think, was a god of... Uh, when they went right. to so the question god. whether there's a people, whether it's some kind of god, whether this is some kind of spiritual being, it's not clear. Is it like an archangel of some sort? Uh, and, an and we'll come to it. Okay, yeah. The next, But the real difficulty I have is why is this considered part of the power of the basin giving a cheirum? Mm. The story about Moshe, I understand. Right. Moshe. Had nothing, there's a battle. Had there's a battle. Real. You won the battle, these people didn't come, you cursed them. So what does that mean? I guess what it really is trying to say is because Devorah is the Devorah is a shofetis. Absolutely. So she is a judge. So she is using her power as the judge to inflict the ultimate um, um, ammunition, right. which is to curse someone. And a curse is equivalent to putting someone into a nidui, into a cherem, into a shamto. In other words, in the bottom line is you are kind of removing them completely and you're also cursing them. So. But that's about as good as we get here in terms of trying to t- t- take this next piece. The Chesiv Oru may rose. So they actually, the basin has the power to curse the person. It's part, I guess, part of the cherem. They curse the person because you see that Devorah cursed the people of Meroz. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's the, the power within the power of the basin. And what do they say? When the basin writes this needly and they say to the person that you are cursed and you're in a shamta, so they say the Hachi Svar de Gavaraba. They actually say that the name of the person who puts you into the Cherem. So the actual, we move to the next step. The person didn't come. We move to the declaration of the Cherem. The Cherem has to say that you're cursed. The Cherem also has to say who's the person who is effecting this. Uh-huh. And the, the, the Gavaraba, the great judge who's right. doing this. Dichsev, because the Pazak says, Omar Hashem, Omar, Omar Malach Hashem. The, the uh, Devorah ev- invokes this in the name of the angel of God, which is, of course, even greater than her. Okay? How do you know you, this is a cherem? Okay, that this is, um, which, because it says, oru, which, is, which it says, oru, oru, you're, oru, curse this curse, which means, the achel vash, and, and you, you, I guess oru auror is because um, you're, you're, you're in a cherem, but you're not completely in a, in a complete, um, I guess, I don't know, I guess there could be, be great, greater levels or worse levels. The Acha Vashasi Bahadei, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, so it ends there. So how do you put him a cherem? Because cherem is once again is cursing. Is a curse. You're cursing the person is equal to the cherem itself. 
Now, how do you know when you put the person in this type of cherem, mashamto, nidoy, the ocha v'shasi ba'day, that he can eat and drink with you, the koi be'ar ba'amos diday, and you can actually be still within the four amos of um, this individual. This is a very low-level type of nidoy. So it's not completely separate as we think about a cherem. You're still together with the person. You can eat with them, and you can you don't have to be separate more of the four amos. Dechsev yoshveha. Uh, because it says, Oru, Oru, and Rioshvel, we're cursing Moros, and we're cursing the inhabitants. We're assuming it means the inhabitants around Meroz. Meroz is being cursed, and the people who are there with them are cursed as well, even though they may not be responsible. They're not part of the Cherem. Not part of the Cherem, you see that there are people living. Meroz is still living together with his inhabitants. Yeah, but the, he's living with who? The people around him, yeah, who is the curse on? He's not living with, with the Jewish people. Correct, but whoever it is, whoever is being cursed, is who? Who is it? Is it him? Is it everybody? Is the people amongst who it lives? In other words, it's saying that the person himself, it's not the person is removed completely. The person is still together with the people it's around people. him. Okay, well, it's not a perfect. It's not a perfect he's example. Until he dies, and then he's not there together anymore. I mean, the curse is a, is a curse of death. It's not a curse of uh, no. No, but when you put it, when you put a person into the higher level of chayyim, he's completely separated. Isn't that what we're talking about here? That she was they were cursing them for not helping out the Jews. And yeah, the I don't know she so cursed them. So does, no, it just says a curse. What was the curse? Well, it could have been curse. They should have uh, before they should have done. Uh, um, well, no, what does it mean when you curse a person? Okay. Persons, when persons are cursed, doesn't okay. mean that they I die. They didn't help you them. You don't have mazel. You don't have mazel. You don't have things that work well. So you just don't help them, or you put them in trouble. They, they didn't help us either. What do you, uh, Amon Moiv, who's the other guy? Asa, when we went through. I don't know. No, nobody helped. Anyway, they were a brother. Who, well, who helped them anyway? I don't know. Who, who okay, I don't know. Them? It's not a perfect example. I agree. Okay. Okay, let's go. <laughs> so, um. But, I, but just just remember that Meroz has Yoshveha. Right. Because I want to come back to this when we tell you who Meroz is. Just tell okay. you some what some, got of, some of the what one of the Rishonim suggests. It's clear it says Yoshveha. So um, so there you see that the, Yosh, fact, the people who live with them proof that you can drink and eat with them. The people can still be around them. Correct. We don't even know who Meroz is yet. Doesn't so hang matter, on for a little it's bit. Clear we're drawing right. a from this though. So, and we know on the partinon chatoi b'tzibur. How do you know you define in this declaration document, which you have to say who it is and who put him into cherem and the fact that it's cursed? How do you know that you defined what he did wrong, mm. what the person did wrong? It says dechsev ki lo bol ezos Hashem. The pasuk in Shira Devorah says exactly what Moroz did wrong. He didn't come to help the Jewish people. That was his sin. And therefore, if a person is recalcitrant or didn't pay the money or didn't come to a basin, you say, this person is in cherem, put by judge so-and-so, because. because he did the following. He didn't do the following. The armor Ula, and Ula said, this once again is a Masorah that they had, Bedala Mer Shipure Shamtia Barak Lamaroz. Barak, remember, it's Devara is the Shofetes, and Barak is the general. He had 400 chauffeurs, which he had them sounded when he put a Shamta, a Cherem, or a Nidui, into Maroz. So they declared it. Everybody heard it. Okay? 400 chauffeurs, yeah. Right? Now, who is. Who is this guy Moroz? Because the whole thing, as you see, is very oblique. We don't know anything about Moroz. We never see this before. We never hear about it afterwards. And it doesn't play a role in the actual story. So Gmar says, Iko Diamri Gava Rabahave. Some say that Moroz was uh, some kind of leader around the area. And he had his ability. He was at peace with the Jewish people. And he had the ability to come and help them. And therefore, because he kind of sat on his tail and did nothing, he was cursed. And another one says, nope, Moroz was not an individual. He was not a human at all. He simply was a star. And the star said, power. Shinemar, as it says in the same Shirat Devorah, Min HaShemayim Nilchama Kochavim. From the heavens, the stars fought against them, um, against Barak. Uh, against Sisra yeah. and Barak and Dvar were successful. So what, what, then what sense does Yoshevah make in that case? So, so that was going to say. So one of the Rishonim <laughs> says, you see from this, some the Rishonim Rachel, that it's not against the Torah to believe in alien life. If Moroz is a star, I, I actually know. And 
Now, you doesn't have to be alive. Yeah, well, it means that, no. For it has the, power. The simple yeah. meaning. Of, the simple <laughs> meaning of it's a star. It means uh, you, um, the star and its surrounding area right. of right. whatever the celestial right. bodies are. But if you if you want to take uh, it and give a drush, it means the star. Whatever this far-off star and solar system and, and who knows universe oh, yeah, is, no. the Yosheveh on the system no. are also cursed. Oh, I got you. But, which means that it's not against the Torah to believe that there is life on a different part of the universe. I got you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you ever thought it was. No, you just said before there were terms with them. What yeah, terms with the star? Because, yeah. because, because uh, wait, in the eyes of Chazal, I think stars had influence. Stars had ta- stars had power. Stars right, had right, power. Stars hold on, hold on. Stars had power. You sing every Shabbos Kela Dome. Stars, planets. Tovim Mo Shabbal Akini. Tzar Medas Bimur Haskel. They have Bina. They have Haskel. They've got wisdom. In the eyes of Chazal, stars and power. The constellations. We learned that with, with the constellations, with the planets. They believe that. Yeah, we, we, learned, we learned in Tom even Hogim. Right. You can't make Kiddush on on Shabbos because it's under the <coughs> under the uh, yeah. Mars. But you don't know. Don't ask me to explain it. Chazal, Chazal had a Chazal. The is it true? The Gemara has a very clear feeling that stars have some kind of vibrance, vitality. They're not simply um, energy uh, bombs oh. that are going off as we know them to be. It's astrology, uh, science. There's a that. certain, and as a result, this star itself is being cursed because the star was in the wrong location, moved it its constellation, put it down, whatever it was. It's the star's fault he's in the wrong location. He moved. The star moved. The star he changed himself. To move it, uh, yeah. I can. Well, you know, you can go, they, they just move wherever they want to move to. Well, they, they did. They no. see they had certain powers. You, know, you don't believe this. I don't believe this. I'm just saying that's what this is based on. Um, but I'm saying the very, the very least, um, it is not against the Torah that there uh, that could be alien life somewhere else. Reason why it should, I surely don't why think so. Why should they? No, because I thought Hashem uh, made the earth. And, and, no, but doesn't and, and, say somewhere that He made many all and right. He destroyed others. So, no, no, so, so how do you even know what, it, what alien life is? Do you think alien life is going to look like you, except it as a giraffe neck? You're talking about bacteria. You're talking about human beings. Whatever. Who knows? Don't no worry. Why don't worry about it? No, I, I'm not worried. I just don't think there is. Good. Okay. Not I, don't know. Know. I don't happen to think so. We have not been proven that there is yet. We have not been proven that there is, but we don't think it's against the Torah. Against the okay, Torah. fair enough. Okay, okay. now. But again. Laugh was crazy on what day? What? Well, life? I think laugh, laugh. Life? Oh, because you're going to be free by next week. No, I think the... Think the stuff in the ocean, I think, was created before first, day six, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, the ocean was like the third day. No, the stuff in, in the ocean. Yeah, the stuff in the ocean. Fourth day. Second so day. life, let's say, on the fifth no, day. No, separate. Life is on... On the fifth day, I think. No, no. in the ocean. Wasn't the sheriffs and then the animals. The sheriffs? Right. The stuff on the land in the sixth day. Before the earth was created. What was? Life was created before the earth was created. Okay. Life first day... Before the earth was created. No. First day is life. Second day is Rakia. That's yeah, my m- third day is my there is a dry land yeah, yeah. and the and on the second part of the third day there is plants are created plants yeah yeah so that's the third day the first day first and time you have something living and the fourth day living. is only the stars and the fourth the day fourth day you go back to the stars, stars. and no sun so no, there's no sun before the fourth day correct. absolutely true so you have life created before the sun was light 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 the way to get light. You have light no, created well, we before didn't the have light as well. First. No, but did right. you come against light? You didn't have the light yet, did you? Yeah. You plants. have plants. Pl- oh, plants. Light but you have, light. Oh. you have light. Oh. But you have light, or some primordial light yeah, from day one. Uh, but yeah, we don't know what that is. But enough for photosynthesis, right? Because yeah, we don't know what that is. Again, what he's saying is, it's kind of light that's enough to make photosynthesis, right? It's a very difficult... That's how it against it, that the comet seeded the Earth as possible. Comets seeded the earth. Those comets came before the sun. Where the comets come where from? The com- where do you have well, comets? It's all part of Rashi. Okay. okay. The Rashi doesn't say comets, right? But let's say. No. Okay. Anyways. So, all right. So, so the 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 cur- the war is cursing the sun. Got to listen. The vote. The vote is cursing morose. Morose. Which is a star. Which no, is. No. So some what, people think what, it's a star. How can you hurt? What do you do? Hurt the star? What's what's the curse? What kind of curse could you make against the, the, curse God. the angel of curse God? God. The angel of God is cursing the star. If you assume that Moroz is a star, the angel of God. What is an angel? Is saying this star is going to be cursed. What does that mean? I don't know what it means. Can it change? Can it be smaller? Can it be bigger? Can it have less of an influence? Will it be? Will have less power? I don't know. But the bottom line is, all, 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 this is the the line about Moroz is a very unusual line. It comes and goes in, you know, in two sentences, a sentence right. and a half. 
in Shirat Devorah. Shirat Devorah is poetry. Poetry is always more difficult to explain on a good day. Oh my God. But it's brought here only as a way to show you that what is the effect of the Cheram is really a curse. Right. In the bottom line, it's a curse. Right. And you see that a person like Devorah had the power to curse she was a judge. Whoever would she curse, whether a star, a person, a great man, who are people, she was able to curse, and therefore, based on that, the power to do so. Uh, who can, who can, um, who sent him? Right. Uh, what, what the cherem actually is? The fact that it's um, what he did. Right. We publicize it, and we make it very clear that it's a curse. And then we're going to come to talk. And we also learned that you can still eat. And you can still eat with them. Right? Correct. Correct. And if he doesn't, if he doesn't pay, if he doesn't pay. Right? Then we actually can to take away, we'll see, can we take away his, his, his money? Okay. If, if the court has, has issued a decision uh, and, he, and he doesn't listen, or maybe even if uh, he doesn't listen to the words of the rabbis, we can give him a knas and to take some money away from him. We'll do that next week. Okay? All right. Okay. Sounds